Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today it is chilly here in the Midwest. I'm not even going to tell you the temperature other than to say it was snowing this morning. Uh, it did warm up a little bit and the snow melted, but still it was snowing. So yikes. Uh, what I want to do today um, is go over some orchid um, seedling growing approaches that actually a colleague shared with me. And I'm calling my colleague a uh, seedling master grower uh, because this guy gets them to grow in ways that I can't I can't do. Um, this is based on uh, him sharing this information with me. And then he didn't, he actually didn't want to, um, you know, release his name, come in the video, do any type of exchange. Um, he, he might be a little shy, I, I don't know, but he did provide a lot of the details of what he did. And I'm going to share some of those, or all the details, at least the ones that I have. I'm going to share those with you. And there's some really interesting things that he did, and some interesting approaches that may help you with growing uh, of your orchids. I'll get to that in just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is, and I have images showing the progress of the deflast orchids, the seedlings that he has over the course of um, a little over a year. And I've got images that were collected every two months of an example of his uh, plants. And again, um, I'm sharing this with you because his, his orchid seedling growth was just nothing short of phenomenal. Um, and, and I think I have some, an understanding of what he did, uh, but still, it was, uh, it was him. There may be some details missing. I, I don't know. I shared this with my orchid growing group in Southwest Florida, and essentially every time I advanced the, uh, the images and showed two months, two months, two months down the road, um, I could hear people in, you know, in the meeting going, ooh, uh, you know, they were, it was just like when I go to these orchid meetings and people show really nice pretty orchids, uh, you know, big flowers, amazing growth. It was the same type of thing, but this was seedling growth. Um, just because, of, again, the results um, to me are so remarkable. Before I get into that, though, I do want to shout out to some of my um, YouTube colleagues. Um, and I think it's a good opportunity for me to do that. I've had more interaction with some of them, not all of them. Um, and I just want to bring out a few. So the first one and the one that I've had the longest, uh, longest term interaction with is Stephen Van Kamp and Lewis. Um, Stephen is an AOS, American Orchid Society judge, very knowledgeable in all aspects of what the flower should look like, what the plant should look like, orchid care. He does crosses. Good guy. I've had some interactions with him. And Stephen, if you're watching, shout out. How you doing? Um, the second person that I want to um, acknowledge um, is, uh, let's see, who do I want to acknowledge? Oh, um, <laughs> sorry about that. So um, it is uh, Melissa Loves Orchids. And um, I've had some more recent interaction uh, with her. And those interactions have been very good. She's had, it's a newer channel, very, uh, it's been very successful. She's collecting a lot of nice orchids. She, she has a lot of hauls, and I, I contacted her in the comments on her channel. And I said, Melissa, how, what are you going to do with it? She's, collect, she's getting so many of them. What are you going to do with all of them? And she says, well, I'm going to put them under my pergola for a while, and we'll see how that goes. And, but she has a lot of space. She's in, uh, Stephen, I should say, Stephen Van Kemp and Lewis, he's in Texas. Uh, Melissa is in South Florida. Uh, and she says she has a lot of property, so there may be another pergola going up, but she's going to put as many in her current orchid pergola as she can. But her plants look good. She's very, um, she presents very well and um, haven't had, just have had an exchange, but uh, I've got an interaction possibly coming up. I might be seeing her uh, at the Tamiami Orchid Festival uh, that I'm going to go to in a few weeks. And I think she's going to be there the same day as me. So hopefully, I know there will be a lot of people there, but hopefully I'll run into her and we'll be able to set up some inter interaction. Uh, next person, just one uh, more orchid. And this is, uh, I've had some interaction with, with Natalia. 
She's also located in Southwest Florida, but she's a little bit north of me, but she joined my local orchid society, so I see her at the meetings. I've had some good exchanges with her. She shouted out to me, I shouted out to her. Um, I wanna get her daughter crossing orchids at a nice young age, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, Natalia of uh, Just One More Orchid, if you're watching, how you doing? Uh, finally, um, the one, uh, the, the last YouTuber that I would like to shout out to is uh, Ingrid's Orchids and More. And that is hosted by uh, Tristan and Catherine uh, Ingram. And these are, I think I would like to call these the uh, up and coming stars of the, of the orchid world and the orchid YouTube world. Uh, very, very uh, knowledgeable people. Um, a couple that um, shares, well, Tristan does a, quite a bit more of the videos. Um, Catherine should be on more of the videos. And together they would be Great. Right now, it's just been one or the other. Very, very young channel, only about uh, about two weeks old, but uh, putting together some a lot of videos quickly, and um, and good stuff. Uh, these these folks, especially Tristan, is very knowledgeable. I've been working in orchids for a long time. All right. So what I want to do today is um, share with you. Mostly, the main purpose of my video today is to share with you how a colleague, also in South Florida is growing um, is growing his seedlings and so a little over a year ago I provided a flask a few flasks to him and the one that I think gave the most remarkable results was a Certipodium punctatum which is a Florida native it was actually a population the the flask again with the seeds the capsules were collected from one of the native Florida Certipodium punctatums and um, his his idea and his intent was to grow some for his own collection, he was going to put some out, and because it's a Florida native, he's going to put some out in natural areas that he had permission uh, to plant in. And then I think he also may release some of those to the um, um, to the public. Um, so that was his in his intent. Um, and he he again, what happened is he sent me images every couple of months of his progress. The first few was like wow, and then the last ones, it's just it the, the wowing. Uh, continues. So these, um, and, and what I want to do, uh, because he's not here, and because the best thing to do is to show uh, PowerPoint on my computer of uh, the images of the seedlings that were collected, um, you know, initially, and then every two months thereafter. And what I'll do is I'll go over some of the aspects of what he did, and I'll dissect some of those down a little bit. Um, the the science behind what he did is really um, kind of interesting in, in one area that I'll emphasize, um, but I just wanted to share with you the remarkable growth that he's observed on his orchid. So what I'm going to do is transition over to a PowerPoint and explain to you a little bit what he did and then show the various stages of growth, and then we'll come back and finish up. All right, so let me get the PowerPoint going. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background on this, the orchid that was utilized, and I call this person the orchid seedling master. He didn't want his name used. And, and if you've got some questions or comments for him, you can um, send those to me. He is a viewer on the, my YouTube channel, and uh, he may see the comments, but I'll collect them and send those to him if you're, if you're interested. All right, so... The orchid, the specific orchid, he's done a few, but I wanted to focus on the Certipodium punctatum, which is the Florida native. These were flasked 3922. They were replated 6922, and they were large enough to deflask in November of 2022. All right, so they were deflasked and um, in November, and it's in November. Um, he did comment that November is the beginning of the dormancy for the species, so he um, he had to trick them. And, and dormancy is induced by both temperature and day length. So he tricked them into continuing growth. And he had a controlled temperature uh, environment, so he had LED lights on the seedlings um, for the first time and. You know, and they were timed for long days, and the temperature was warm. So he wanted to keep continued growth um, going on for him. And then he also wanted me to put a um, 
disclaimer in here, and that was that the conditions that I'm about to describe to you today worked for him. Other environments and conditions may yield different results. And, and so this is what he does, and you may be able to pick pieces and parts of what he does uh, in order to get his success and apply them to what you're doing if you're interested. Okay, and, and then the point is if something already works for you, the protocol I'm about to describe may work better or not as well. So, but again, the point is you may find something in the protocol that makes sense to you, and you may decide to evaluate different parts of the protocol further. Uh, the other thing that the Orchid Seedling Master <laughs> wanted me to share with you was that the, all the conditions had good airflow with fans or open wind access. So in his indoor conditions, he had, um, you know, he had fans going, and some of those are in some of the images that I'll share with you. And then he did place them outside in his uh, greenhouse or shade house area, and those had op those were open on, on parts of them for wind access. So indoor and out, there was he wanted to stress the importance of air movement. So as we move forward, um, you just uh, you just need to be aware of these things. All right, so let's move through these, and this shows these aren't the freshly deflasted seedlings, but this is after, so they were flasked in November 2022, and this is an update, the first update, which is two months uh, after deflasking on January 11th is when these images were collected. So two months, not much growth here. These things are starting to grow. So they were placed in, um, and they were placed in two-inch pots uh, with well-rinsed charcoal and precision-grade Orchiata bark, all right, and you can see there's a little bit there's a little bit of perlite um, in there as well, or maybe maybe some kind of stone, all right. So the initial deflast seedlings were placed in um, plastic bins under LED light, and I think the temperature is between 78 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So after a few weeks, a few granules of crust oyster shells that actually might be what's in here. Uh, were top dressed in a very weak solution, and he uses one quarter um, ounce, I'm not sure if it's ounce or strength, of reverse osmosis uh, Michigan State University um, fertilizer water with kelp and CalMag was lightly applied. So a very weak, essentially a very weak fertilizer solution uh, soon after deflasking. Um, and then when the initial roots were formed, and I'm not sure if that's at this point or soon after, but as soon as the roots were formed, um, he used a mycorrhizal drench. And what he used, it was a plantonics uh, blend of mycorrhizal mix, and I'll have more on this later. Um, the other thing to say is that any, um, any browning that was on the leaves was trimmed away using sterile instruments. Uh, what he's showing here after two months in is just general good growth, but you can see in this plant where the root came out, and this is probably new growth uh, from this root that he pulled out of this container. Um, what I want you to do is look at, because look at this and kind of make a note in your mind of how these plants look, because we'll jump to the next slide, which is two months later. So this is the four month time point. All right, so this is what we have four months after deflasking, and you can see, I mean, you know, the, the growth from between two months and four months is just phenomenal, and just so you know, I hate to spoil the surprise for you, but it keeps on, it keeps on going like this. So these are, you know, these are not compots. These are, these are individual plantlets in these, um, you know, in these pots shown right here. And that's how they look. Now, I think, I think that this is, this is at the point where they may have been uh, transplanted into larger pots uh, after they had a little bit of a decent root system. And what he does, he doesn't take any of the old medium off. He uses the old medium and doesn't disturb the roots and just puts them in the new medium. And so um, what happens here is it's, um, the medium contains uh, coconut, um, coconut, C-O-I-R, um, chunky with charcoal and perlite and oyster shells. So that's the next potting medium after they outgrow the two-inch pot into these uh, three-inch pots. 
All right, and, and uh, adds new medium that's mostly, that, that's somewhat similar to the previous one, and he transfers a lot of the medium over in order not to damage uh, the roots. And he continues with the, uh, the fertilizer application. He increased the strength from, it was an eighth strength to now a quarter strength of the fertilizer regime. So, you know, and when you have plants and flasks, they have, they have a residual carryover of a lot of the nutrients that were, they were exposed to. But his plants are really green and they look, as you can tell from these images, they look, they look really nice. All right, so the next, the next step here is, and again, this is take a look at this, get a picture in your mind, four months, and then we'll move to six months, which is right here. All right, so it's six months after you're flasking. What you can see is these things, they still look great. They are in a different pot, so now they're in a three-inch, what he calls tall and clear pot. And this is uh, at, at uh, you know, this time point. And so he keeps them in, in these pots and continues the, the fertilizer regime um, at this point. All right, so they're, you know, just, just a continuation. Let me, let me back up a little bit. I think I forgot to show you. Oh, you can't see it. So there's fans maybe in the background here, maybe somewhere else. There's fans in some of these images, uh, but I thought it would be in this one. But this is still in, I think this might be out in his uh, greenhouse space because you've got a bromeliad here. So really four to five to six months under controlled, you know, indoor LED lights and then out to the greenhouse uh, right here. But again, phenomenal growth of these uh, plants six months after deflasking, if you remember what that thing looks like. And we'll, um, you know, we'll keep on going further. So again, take a picture of this in your mind um, and then add another two months and we have that right here. So here you can see how much larger uh, these plants look. Okay, the fan, the fan that I told you about is right here in this image and it's about in the center on the top of your, uh, of your screen right now. So, um, these are, again, plants that are growing. This is clearly his outdoor uh, growing space, and it is either a greenhouse or shade house. He has his other plants out here as well. But this is only eight months after deflasking, and look, look at the size of these, of these plants. Um, you know, it is a, um, he, I think he said, this is a three-inch pot. It's, it might be a little bigger. It might be four-inch. I, I, I don't know, but you can take a look at these multiple um, you know, multiple growths coming out of these pots. This is, I'm sure he pulled the best one here, and there are all these other, but look at, you know, these plants really do look incredible. They look, and we're not done yet. We're only at the, um, you know, at the eight month time point here. So let's move forward, and again, take a picture, and move on to the 10 month time point. I'm sorry, that, we took a bigger jump. This is one year, so this was, I'm sorry, eight months, and then we went, went four months out. I'm sorry about that, folks. Um, so anyway, this is, but look at this, look at the growth on these guys. So this is the clear pot in the center, and you can see the extensive root growth. Um, you know, Certipodium develops really extensive root systems. But this is really, um, it's just, it's incredible. Um, the, the system that's here, but again, he's got a combination of, I told you, I shared with you the different types of, uh, of components that were in his potting media. Um, and again, look at the general health and vigor of, of the plant here. Uh, intermediate view is on the right side. So this is, and, and when you look at this in perspective, so, you know, this is his hand, this is a, it's probably, I think this is a, yeah, this has got to be a four inch pot here, uh, round pot though. Uh, maybe, it, I don't think it's three inches. Anyway, but the amount of growth that he's getting here, and you can see from this image that they are growing from the, they seem to be growing from the same plant, but look how green the foliage is. So he's taking care of the plants really well. They are clearly in the greenhouse um, at this point. And all I have for you right now is um, one more one more image, and this is at the 14-month time point, and that's here. So just a continuation of the incredible growth uh, that we've seen. So this is 14 months after deflasking, but look at the, you know, look at how big these plants are, and look at the quality of the plant. Now this is this is the um, you know he's in the middle of the 
um, the dry season. So this is the dormant season for this. These things are not losing any of the leaves. They're not going dormant. Um, he, he slows down his watering and fertilizer applications. Um, and during, during dry season, which is what we have this time of year, but what is, again, remarkable about this is the amount of growth that was seen after a year and here, 14 months. All right, so what is he doing? There's a few, I want to point to a few keys in this approach and what he's doing. He's taking care of these plants really, really well. He does, I should mention that he also does, um, you know, occasional um, insecticide application um, and, and other, other uh, pesticide applications as well. Uh, but the things that I think uh, gave this remarkable growth, he separated the individual plants shown right here. I've seen a lot of people that do compots where they'll put them all in the same container. And if you can imagine, you know, 25 of these in the same container, you're not going to get this type of growth. You're getting this kind of growth because they're spread out. And even the roots, you look at this, the roots are getting pretty crowded. So you're probably even limiting the growth a little bit of this plant. But he gets good growth. He spreads them out. He's got very controlled environmental conditions initially. The other thing and the thing that, um, the thing that I'm going to evaluate a little bit is what he, what I referred to earlier as a micro drench. And so what he does is application of mycorrhizal fungi pretty soon after deflasking. So I've looked into that a little bit. I asked him which one he uses and he uses this product right here, which is Myco Bliss. Um, this is um, this is available on from Amazon. I'll put it in the video description if you want to purchase this. Um, this I, I actually have this. I've never used it. I'm embarrassed to say I've never used it on my orchids. I use it on my other plants. So this was a developed. This is a general mycorrhizal inoculant, and this is what it looks like. And this can be sprinkled as a powder, either either in the soil or you know in the mix or on the surface of the plant and what happens to, what these are these are mycorrhizal and this is a mycorrhizal fungus um, what mycorrhizal mean well myco the first part of this word means a fungal and then um rhizy, the second part of this word and it's got a weird spelling, but it's okay. The second part of this word, rhizome, means either root or root associated. So this is a fungus that is associated with the roots, and uh, it's actually a collection of different fungi. And orchids need mycorrhizal fungi in the wild for seed germination. In nature, they need this for seed germination. They set up a relationship with the seed, and what they do is break down some of the components of the bark and the soil, and they feed the embryo that's in the seed in order to get seed germination in native orchids. And it's more, it's more important with the terrestrials, but it's also important uh, with the epiphytic orchids um, as well. And so this is, a, this is actually a really old story. It's a fascinating story. There's a number of different fungi shown in this list here that can become associated with the plant and the roots of the plants and what it's done what it does in addition to feeding the seedlings what it's this is actually used um, it can be used for and actually is, is present in, in many if not most plants not all of them um, and it actually increases the ability to absorb both water but more important nutrients and trans, pl transport those to the plants. So this is a lot of times in, in terrestrial plants, you have mycorrhizal populations that are associated with the roots that aid in nutrient uptake. And these are beneficial organisms. And there's a whole array of beneficial organisms. There's teams at, at various places that are studying these organisms. And they change over time in orchids as well as other plants. And there's a lot of different types of organisms that are there. These are all fungal, but they're bacterial, they're beneficial bacterial organisms, um, beneficial microbes of a whole different types of, of ranges and, and, and types. So this is, um, you know, this is really an exciting area. Now what, again, it's believed it does is transport the nutrients and water from the soil or the matrix into the plant itself. There's some current literature that's coming out that suggests that 
they may also age the, these beneficial fungi, these mycorrhizal may even aid a little bit in um, as far as protection against certain plant pathogenic organisms. All right, so there's a way that these, what these organisms, their association, they either compete directly or they enhance the natural resistance. It's kind of an organism that's associated with a plant, so they're, it's a, kind of like their immune system, so their defense responses are heightened when their beneficial fungi that are associated with these, and that allows them to fight off the pathogenic organisms. Uh, again, most people believe that it's just a nutrient uptake thing, but there may be other mechanisms that explain why these mycorrhizal organisms, why these beneficial microbes are beneficial to plants. And, and again, there's, there's lots of people studying this. It's an exciting new area. Okay, let's get back to this product right here. So this is a product that has five different broad beneficial um, mycorrhizal organisms, all right? And they, again, they supply this to you in a powder, it's a dry powder, you spores, you put them, you put these associated with these, add water, and they, they become activated, all right? So I have this stuff and I'm gonna be evaluating this. I've started looking into this a little bit and there's a few different suppliers of this. Mycobliss, again, from uh, Plantonics is um, you can get this at Amazon. The second product that I'm looking into uh, is called Mycomax, and this is, uh, this is produced by New Age Farming that is a company, I think in, I'm gonna, I think it's South Dakota, um, but this is, this, and what they do is they have a variety of different products. Um, I contacted the company and uh, Brady Kirch Navy replied to me, uh, who's the president owner of the company, <clears throat> and said that this is the one that he recommends for orchids. Now, they haven't tried it, they haven't evaluated it, but this is what he recommended to me, and this mix is called Mycomax, and this contains eight different um, mycorrhizal fungi. Um, and there are some duplicate organisms that are, that are be between the Mycobliss and the Mycomax, shown right here, and those are, those are in, you may, you may not be able to see it very well, but those are in blue. But there's additional organisms that are in Mycomax. I don't know if this is gonna work better. So one other thing that I wanted to tell you about relating to these, um, these mycorrhizal fungi is that I did, you know, there could be orchid-specific strains, and I contacted, again, uh, Brady Kirch Navy, and he said he couldn't think of anything. He recommended this one that's for the for garden. I did contact uh, Larry Zettler, who's at Illinois College, who is a mycorrhizal expert in orchids. And I asked him if he knew of anyone who was selling an orchid-specific blend, and he said no, and I could develop one if I wanted to, but I'd have to isolate all the organisms. And there may be a group in Australia that has this, but <clears throat> he, uh, you know, he, he just didn't know. So anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to evaluate these things, and what I'll do is, is apply this stuff, like I said, to my D-flask seedlings and let you know how it works out. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. I, I hope that you're as excited as I am about the, uh, about the results that I share with you today and how those Certipodium punctanus have grown so much within uh, 14 months. If you have any, any questions for the person that provided those images to me, uh, put them in my comments and I'll try to share those uh, with you. If you're interested in his plants, let me know as, as well. Um, that's all I have for today. I'm excited about <laughs> um, my tour of Green Circle Growers coming up and my return to Southwest Florida also coming up pretty soon. All right, that's all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you could click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, that's all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed it and happy propagating.